Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Jodi Edishore. I am the director at BioNexus Health Clinic. So today I will be uh, presenting a case study to have a look at Lyme-induced autism in utero transfer of Lyme disease. And I will be speaking of uh, four-year-old little Stefan that came to me about three months ago and was a uh, pretty severe case of autism. And we started looking back at his prenatal history. You know, we went back looking at his mom. Mom had some thyroid issues. Mom had um, some autoimmune thyroid issues, Hashimoto's. And she also complained of occasional joint pain and fatigue, which she would attribute to various things. You know, she has uh, a stressful job, She's getting older. She was stressed with her, uh, with her pregnancy. She lost the child before Stefan. So that was causing a lot of anxiety. So there were uh, various things that mom, mom's Lauren. So th there were various things that Lauren attributed her stress to, her symptoms, her uh, medical issues. But moving forward, the one thing that Lauren uh, remembers was that her entire pregnancy with Stefan was full of complications, uh, excessive vomiting, bleeding. She had to go in for checks every two weeks until the uh, seventh month. Now remember, she had lost one pregnancy prior to Stefan, right? So, um, and she had lost that pregnancy at three months. So almost at the end of the first trimester. So it was very traumatic for Lauren. Uh, now, Stefan's birth, as Lauren explains, was difficult. The umbilical cord was wrapped around the baby. The baby was blue didn't cry for the first three to five minutes. He was in the ICU getting oxygen. The APCAR score was seven. And finally, after about two weeks in the ICU, the baby was sent home. Thankfully, he ate well. He grew, <clears throat> he grew well in the first month of life good muscle tone, fairly good sleeping, uh, playful, positive, smiling. Now, after, you know, uh, around when Stefan was uh, seven and a half to eight months old, they went for a vacation to the Catskills. Uh, Catskills is a... Uh, beautiful vacation spot in upstate New York. And, you know, there's the woods, there's hiking, trekking, nature resorts. And after they came back, mom doesn't remember any uh, insect bite or, well, yes, you know, she mentioned mosquito bite. She did mention uh, a couple of regular looking mosquito bites, you know, but she doesn't remember any tick attached and she doesn't remember um, any bullseye on the baby. So what happened was after they came back, now this is about seven and a half, eight months of age, uh, he was diagnosed with, uh, uh, with high fever, ended up with pneumonia and had to be hospitalized for a few days where he received, once again, oxygen, he received uh, ibuprofen, steroids, antibiotics, uh, it took him about three months to uh, to recover. Okay, but you know, uh, mom tells me that he never seemed to fully recover. He was a, a, a very 
very alert, strong, healthy baby prior to this trip. And when they came back, um, he wasn't really thriving. Right? He started getting severe acid reflux. Uh, at nine months, he was full into his acid reflux, very picky eating, uh, eczematic rash on his body. He developed a migrating irritation that appeared on his face, the eyes, mouth. Um, then, you know, uh, they were managing with medication, with steroids. Around 11 months of age, he developed excessive secretions from his eyes. He developed flu-like symptoms for more than a month in the middle of summer. Now, he stopped making further developmental progress, especially with socialization, eye contact, and speech. And at 14 months, no speech. At 21 months, he developed excessive urination, still no speech, poor eye contact. Uh, that is when he was, uh, uh, he, he was referred to the developmental pediatrician and he was diagnosed with a strong possibility of autism spectrum disorder. They went home and Lauren tells me that, you know, of course that diagnosis uh, devastated the entire family. You know, I, I mean, Stefan was born after years of trying uh, one miscarriage, and you know he was the the only child in the family. Now, uh, within a few weeks of the severe autism diagnosis, uh, Stefan started developing uh, fevers, which would come every five to six weeks. Every five to six weeks, uh, Stefan would get high fevers, inexplicable. The pediatrician would, uh, would assume it was viral, gave him antiviral treatments, no benefit. Um, he would wake up in the middle of the night. He would start crying and start head banging, hitting his head on the side of the bed from three to five in the morning every night for those four or five days of his, you know, cyclical fever issues. Uh, he was evaluated by psychiatrists, psychologists, ENT surgeons. They did an EEG for him. He was evaluated by a neurologist. And uh, Lauren, his mom says, you know, nothing appeared to be wrong as far as all of that, uh, all of those uh, lab testing was concerned. And she took him back to the developmental pediatrician who confirmed the diagnosis of autism spectrum uh, disorder. He received early intervention at home. They started speech therapy, ABA therapy. Um, his behavior problems just seemed to get worse. He started getting angry. He still had the frequency of urination. Head banging appeared occasionally. His fevers continued. Um, at three and a half years of age, uh, Lauren tells me they went for the 10th opinion of a 10th specialist who confirmed his diagnosis of autism and also gave him a diagnosis of ADHD and wanted to put him on, uh, on Ritalin. Mom and dad did not wish to do this, right? Lauren and Dan, mom and dad. So Lauren and dad, uh, Dan, who is the dad, did a lot of research and they heard about uh, out of country, I don't want to, you know, uh, name which facility, but they heard about out of country 
stem cells treatment for children with autism. So they took Stefan for stem cells, extremely expensive. Like ex when I say extremely, I mean extremely expensive, cost prohibitive uh, stem cells treatment. After coming back within a week, Stefan developed uncontrollable aggression, extreme hyperactivity, unable to sleep. They inquired with the facility, they looked at support groups, um, and, and Stefan actually became an even further picky eater. It got worse, his, his picky eating got worse as well after the stem cells procedure. And you know, it was a, a, a very well-known, frequently visited stem cell center um, by folks in, in the United States with, with children with autism. So Lauren tells me that they looked at the support group and they were informed that you know, it was supposed to be to be expected that things go really south after a, a few weeks into the stem cells. And then you know, um, for a few months, things will stay bad. And then they, they, they start to improve if the child is going to receive any gains from the procedure. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, approximately $20,000 later, there are no guarantees, but desperate parents uh, try, you know, anything and everything they can. So uh, Dan and Lauren tried and for three to four months, it was extreme hardship for the family, but they had the hope that, well, you know, perhaps uh, we will see improvements. And that was false. Uh, Stefan did not improve. His symptoms were extreme. They did additional research and they, they lost faith in modern medicine and decided to go with um, natural therapy. And that is when they saw some of my YouTube videos and, you know, um, recovery stories from other parents, researched what I'm all about, how my son went through all of this, you know, a false diagnosis of autism, uh, treatment for Lyme disease, a stage three neurological Lyme disease, um, and you know how we saw Dr. Charles Ray Jones, God rest his soul, absolutely brilliant, amazing physician, and uh, how my son slowly recovered from Lyme disease, PANS, PANDAS, mold, biotoxin illness. And when she she uh, read my story, and she, I, I, I mean Stefan's mom, Lauren, you know it. Uh, it resonated with her because their house had had flooding issues in the basement and a bathroom leak from one of the bathrooms upstairs into the kitchen ceiling downstairs. And that really, I mean, the the stain on the ceiling wall in the kitchen had never really been investigated. Uh, the contractor had explained that the leak had been fixed upstairs in the bathroom and that the, the stain on the ceiling in the kitchen, you know, should just be painted over. And as long as it dries, it should not be an issue. Um, and mom did complain that the basement had a very musty, moldy smell they had, a, a, it was a finished basement. They had a playroom for Stefan in there. In fact, mom had many sensory activities in the basement for Stefan. The washer and dryer was in the basement. The washer was a front loader washer that had come with the house. So it was about 11 years old um, at present. Right? It wasn't that old when they had purchased the house from the previous homeowners. So all of these things were, you know, it, it uh, propelled Lauren to seek out Bionexus Health 
and herbal medicine and plant-based treatment options for children with autism and complicated autism. So she came to me, we, you know, I, I examined Stefan, we went through the, the entire evaluation process, examination process, you know, took down all of their information. Um, and I've already given you the, the history information, right? Um, and moving forward, we ran some labs, uh, looking at the symptoms, right? We ran, uh, we used uh, specialty labs specializing in stool testing. And we ran specialty labs specializing in Lyme disease treatment as well. Um, and we ran a nasal swab to look for uh, mold and Marcons in uh, deep in the sinuses, including biofilm. And all of these labs showed up uh, as positive. You know, uh, Lyme disease, ehrlichiosis, tick-borne relapsing fever, Bartonella. These were what were uh, discovered initially. We also discovered Endolimax nana, we discovered blastocystis hominis. These are both intestinal parasites. We discovered uh, strep, staph. Uh, what else? There was candida in the stool test. The uh, beta glucuronidase was very high in the stool test. The SIG A was also extremely high for this child, for Stefan. And we ran additional testing. The HLA-DR showed up you know, positive for uh, genetic predisposition to chronic Lyme disease, as well as low MSH, which is alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. The Marcon's testing, nasal swab, showed up as positive with three plus biofilm with additional infections with strep pneumonia resistant to um, ciprofloxacin and doxycycline. This was the strep pneumonia that was resistant to these two antibiotics. And we also discovered fungal growth in the sinuses. So, all in all, Lyme disease, co-infections, mold exposure, and uh, gut problems were, hey, additionally, I forgot to mention that the stool test also demonstrated that the normal microbiome of Stefan was way off track. Many of the good bacterial strains were low, and it was of great concern because there were so many additional infections in the gut that showed up. And, you know, it made sense with the SIGA being high, beta glucuronidase being high. Um, we also ran a methylation panel for Stefan. And the methylation panel came up with uh, MTHFR C677. He was homozygous. And the other significant uh, genetic mutation or you know, SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphism was the CBS699 showed up. So there was a little bit of sulfur sensitivity um, as well, right? Um, VDR, sorry, uh, CBS was heterozygous. His VDR or vitamin D receptor TAQ was, a TAQ and FOQ were both heterozygous mutations. Now keep in mind, just because you see genetic mutations doesn't mean that there is any kind of a genetic uh, mutation that is expressing itself, right? Sure, there are mutations, but that doesn't mean that all of them are actively expressing all at once. Um, I found that to be a false assumption in my practice. You know, in fact, uh, the only important information 
to glean from this um, methylation panel testing is that there can be detoxification challenges because we know that when there are many infections, detox is a, is a big part of any naturopathic um, holistic protocol for treatment. In fact, it is part of any uh, conventional uh, treatment plan as uh, uh, treatment plan as well, treatment regimen. So that gives you a clue if the child has any MTHFR issues that that the detoxification may be a bit of a challenge to expect um, moderate to severe Herxheimer or die-off reactions. Um, that's the information uh, that was obtained from this investigation. But um, important thing to remember is that I absolutely do not recommend you know, immediately starting with the methylated B vitamins, treating for methylation, because as long as there is inflammation in various organs in the body, you know, we know that Lyme disease, co-infections, uh, tick-borne infections in general, including uh, mold illness, they're all can cause um, multi-systemic inflammatory reactions. The brain, the body, the gut can be very much inflamed, the muscles, the joints. Uh, and it is important to bring this inflammation down as a matter of priority before attempting any kind of methylation. Because I have seen in my experience, including with my own son, that severe over-methylation reactions can happen and those are very difficult to calm down. So um, that is one thing to keep in mind. Okay, so what we had to do next was to come up with a, a beautiful treatment plan for Stefan. Again, you know, 100% plant-based. And these are the things that we considered while designing uh, Stefan's treatment plan, right? We need to consider the effects of all of these bacterial and microbial toxins on the body, right? There's gonna be metabolic waste. We have to consider biofilm, changes in cell membrane permeability, lowering of pH, enzyme inhibition. There can also be neurotransmitter imbalances, uh, molecular mimicry, autoimmunity, like pans, pandas, um, all of these things have to be considered. Additionally, since the spirochetes can paralyze multiple aspects of the immune system, uh, the, the child is left without adequate immune defenses against many infections and toxins. So it is important to address all of the bacterial, viral, fungal, um, and parasitic infections, which we found in Stefan's lab testing, like I had mentioned earlier, right? Now, speaking of bacterial and microbial endo and exotoxins, remember these can be neurotoxins. They can cause disruption centrally in the brain, in the pineal gland, in the hypothalamus, in the pituitary, uh, these can cause major metabolic changes like cryptopyroduria, KPU, emotional problems. Sometimes it can be a psychiatric presentation, a neurotransmitter depletion, hormonal imbalance, endocrine problems. Um, and these microbial toxins can exert a synergistic effect with heavy metals, xenobiotics, uh, if there are any kind of, you know, um, major dental issues like root canals, a uh, lot of cavities, try, you know, believe me, I've seen patients as young as three to four years old where root canals have, have been performed. It's uh, such a shame. Now, in Stefan's case, Lauren acknowledged, uh, she mentioned that she has um, seven amalgam fillings in her mouth. 
which you know she was not aware of the significance of the mer mercury toxicity from those and the risk of passing all of those to her, uh, her infant, to her um, child in utero. One thing to address is, one other thing to address is there are uh, three components when dealing with tick-borne infections, right? So we have the actual presence of uh, spirochete infections and the other co-infections that need to be treated. Then we also have the illness producing effects of microbial exo and endotoxins in the host, in this case, Stefan, in response to microbial triggers that I just spoke about. And last but not the least, very important in fact, the immune system reactions provoked by both the toxins as well as the microbes, the bacteria and other microbes. Right now, the immune effects, the immune system reactions will depend on various factors like uh, genetics, past trauma, like birth trauma for Stefan. Uh, I elaborated on, on his genetics as well. Right? So immune reactions can be molecular mimicry, can be various allergies. Uh, environmental allergies, food sensitivities that can manifest uh, as, you know, food intolerances, extremely picky eating, skin rashes, eczema. And then there is autoimmunity, like fans pandas, which is an autoimmune condition. You know, Hashimoto's is also an autoimmune condition. Um, and chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia is considered in you know in in that same uh, in the same category and interestingly enough when mom lauren researched more and more you know and conversations with myself long story short turns out that she had lyme disease and co-infections and um when she was treated her hashimotos now has greatly reduced uh, she chose to go the plant-based route as well for herself. And, you know, her fatigue, her brain fog, her uh, thyroid, her energy has greatly improved. Her hair loss is much better. Her uh, weight loss after birth is much better now. So mom is feeling really good as well. So, you know, uh, of course, uh, if mom and child are feeling good, then the father, Dan, is over the moon. I mean, it has really helped the entire family with, with you know, beautiful quality of life improvements that, that have been seen. Um, so we had to address, for poor little Stefan, we addressed toxins, heavy metals, um, chemical toxins, environmental exposures, nutritional deficiencies, biochemical imbalances. Then we also evaluated his food intolerances, his EMF sensitivities. Um, we had to address his birth trauma as well. and. Uh, had his tonsils evaluated, his uh, eyes were, uh, were uh, properly evaluated. We evaluated his body for any structural musculoskeletal problems, right? His sleeping space was evaluated to minimize or eliminate any kind of radio frequencies, radiation, electromagnetic frequencies, minimized his screen time. Uh, we grounded him before he slept and we saw tremendous changes in little step. And hey, wait, actually, I forgot to mention one very important point, which would be biofilm, right? Biofilm, in his sinuses had to be addressed. 
biofilm in his gut had to be addressed. And that was something to be done slowly and carefully. In fact, anytime uh, we address, uh, actually, sorry, let me backtrack just a little bit, right? When treating Lyme disease, Lyme disease, uh, you will treat the spirochete itself, and then you have to treat the spore form of spirochete, which is the cyst form of spirochete. And while treating the cyst form of spirochete, it is important to address biofilm. So I, I, I just wanted to give you that point of reference. Um, and when treating biofilm for Stefan, we had the nasal deep sinus biofilm, as well as the um, gut biofilm that is an important step in the treatment of the spore form of Lyme. So um, that needs to be done carefully and slowly. In fact, all herbal treatment, all detoxification has to be done in a very slow, steady, consistent manner with slow buildup. For Stefan, we had to build up one drop every few days to minimize his die-off and Herxheimer reactions. Even though his body was first, I mean, you know, we didn't rush into treating his Lyme and co-infections and his mold. Um, we started with making sure that his body was properly supported, you know, he was uh, nutritionally supported. He was detoxing. Uh, his inflammation was being supported and reduced. And after that, we started treating uh, with antimicrobials. That's when we added the antimicrobial herbals. And once he slowly progressed with the antimicrobials, we added um, herbs for uh, gut repair to repair the damage. It's very important. You can't just uh, eliminate the, the root causes and leave it at that. Remember, these root causes have caused damage. Multiple organ systems have been damaged. So that damage needs to be repaired uh, either herbally or nutritionally with supplements as well. So that repair has to, has to occur. Um, and we saw absolutely fantastic improvements with, um, with Stefan. So uh, Stefan's family has uh, dramatically transformed their life with uh, completely natural plant-based protocols. And, um, you know, uh, actually one of the important things to remember is that children on the autism spectrum, and there are many research studies that have been conducted that children on the autism spectrum have a, a leaky gut, which was demonstrated. I forgot to mention that, that you know, Stefan's zonulin was close to 500. And ideally, I like to see the number below 100. So zonulin is the marker for leaky gut. And, you know, so uh, we had to use dietary modifications, gluten-free, dairy-free, low sugar. We had to use low FODMAPs for him as well, because he had a little bit of SIBO that came up along the way that showed up um, you know, along the way for Stefan. So it was, it was a process about 18 months, slow and steady um, recovery. And overall, he's done really well. It is difficult to recognize that Stefan is the, the same child. You know, his uh, uh, autism diagnosis according to his latest IEP evaluation in school is almost about to be taken away 
And the improvements that they've seen are language, um, eye contact, desire to socialize, spatial awareness, executive functions, focus, listening comprehension, his acid reflux is all better, his stools are now formed, his bowels are regular, his muscle tone is much improved, his gross motor coordination, social skills, visual motor processing, sensory regulation. He was a big time sensory seeker. And remember I mentioned the continuous head banging. That turns out was headaches, which are uh, one of the symptoms that can be seen in patients with Marcon's. So when, when we treated his uh, nasal Marcon's and fungi and biofilm, the head banging stopped. His visual spatial skills improved. He was able to catch a ball. Just to give you an example of a visual spatial skill, he's able to catch a ball. Uh, he started um, understanding the alphabet. He started holding a crayon and trying to color. It's just been fantastic watching Stefan grow and thrive the way he has. And, you know, um, tremendous kudos to his mom and dad for working together, for problem solving together, for being a team, for keeping the stress at home low. You know, um, one thing that Lauren said to me, and I... I, I remember that, you know, she said that it is very important to keep doing the necessary work to help your child with dignity, without self-blame, guilt, or anger. And, you know, for spouses and partners, herself and Dan, she, both of them agreed that don't lose your love in the struggle of managing a, a child with severe autism. I mean, any child with a severe, uh, severe disability and special needs. And if you're at the end of your strength, then pick yourself up again and keep seeking and finding the answers. You know, communicate with your spouse, communicate with your child's teachers, counselors, doctors, um, imagine your child improving, research, look for a practitioner that understands the full 360, not just symptom suppression, but looking at the person as a whole, looking at it from multiple different angles and, you know, addressing all of these issues in the, in the correct order. Now that comes from me, actually, not Lauren, but Lauren understood this as well, that, you know, as soon as you see infections, that doesn't mean, oh my God, infections, we have to treat. Sure we do, but you cannot just go ahead and use, use antimicrobials and explode a grenade. These are chronic infections. So it is important, like I highlighted earlier, that it's a process. Support the body, start detoxification, start reducing inflammation, and then you can go in and um, start the antimicrobial therapy. Right? Like you need to go slow in order to heal faster, right? If you go in this manner, if you understand the uh, priority of treatment, that's when you will see the child will not only survive, but will also thrive. And of course, you know, positive thinking low stress environment at home, being patient, understanding what your child is going through, accept what it is, trust your gut, trust, trust the practitioner that you have chosen for yourself, work together as a team, as a family. And I have seen phenomenal results. So, 
uh, to end on a positive note, the information is that Stefan will be mainstreamed for uh, reading, writing, gym, music, and hopefully soon be out of his special needs classroom as he is mainstream for these other subjects as well. Um, I hope this has given you, uh, my talk today has given you inspiration, has given you some food for thought, perhaps even some um, ideas to explore and help your own family, your own child. It's been wonderful presenting Stefan's case. It was an absolute honor to help um, Stefan and Lauren and Dan on this journey uh, of recovering Stefan. And you know, thank you for listening. I am Dr. Jody Adashore with Bionexus Health. Um, I have a YouTube channel. The name of the channel is Bionexus Health USA. Feel free to um, feel free to have a look and um, take good care of each other. Keep smiling. Thank you. Namaste.